One of the biggest areas is cloud native uh, computing. I think everyone recognizes the benefits of moving to the cloud with respect to cost, uh, eliminating uh, the need to operate uh, applications, having someone else do that. It's in professional people do that for you. There's a lot of benefit. But the cloud also exists in large part because it was created as a better model for web applications, which means anyone adopting cloud native needs to think about the web programming model in order to get the best out of it. And years ago, when we were creating enterprise systems, we looked at the web as kind of a bolt on. We'd have a web server that would mediate between our enterprise systems that ran the company and the outside world where the websites would talk with each other and you would transfer uh, one from uh, to the other through an interface. Mm -hmm. And now the web programming model is the same as the cloud native model or essentially the same. And now enterprises have to think about I need to program things according to the web in my enterprise because that's how I get the best digital experience for my customers. It's all about web and mobile and the programming model behind those has to be brought into the enterprise for it to work correctly. And this is a big change, but it's and it's a kind of a way of generalizing the, the technology shift, but it's something everyone has to has to really tackle and take a look at very closely. That's right. It is a big change and with change comes innovation. So let's talk a bit more about innovation. Um, what do you think banks need to consider and prioritize when revamping uh, the technology and operation divisions uh, to promote um, innovation? And also, uh, how does this translate into uh, a culture of innovation? There's a lot there. Uh, banks often still have batch systems that need to be changed to event driven systems. So the whole area of event driven architecture needs to be brought into the fold. The way of doing uh, microservices to break the application up, the way of creating APIs uh, as the way of connecting system together and exposing bank services out. A lot of banks really want to take it, take part in the, the API economy by having their APIs for their services be what their partners use. Uh, they offer them often to fintechs as a way to better interact with banking services and this they need to build up a bit more but in this area where, there, where there's a lot of innovation going on already there's not a lot of consistency on how it's done and i think the the challenges are still there with respect to getting the apis right from the customer and the consumer point of view and getting the integrations behind those apis right to the existing systems and these are two big challenges that companies really need to tackle to get it right and just a quick add-on question to that. Um, what about digital platforms? How can they be used uh, to expedite innovation? We want to see, I think I would recommend starting with uh, some digital apps really to see how it goes, do some experimentation, move incrementally. It's a very difficult thing. So the, the joke is often you're changing the engine while the car is running or you know, changing the propellers while the plane is flying because you have to keep the business going. It's a very difficult challenge and you need different skills and you need uh, a really a different approach. Uh, Capital One is, is a great example I like to use. They're not a customer of ours, but they have a very well documented case study of their journey over four years from on-prem to completely working in AWS. And we see them now bringing more products out more quickly to the marketplace, uh, such as the uh, early pay application which other banks have looked at and still not uh, delivered. And Capital One, if you read their collateral, uh, will attribute that to their ability to you know, drive change to their digital platforms more, more quickly. Uh, and they had to, uh, over the time, one of the very interesting things that they did was they insourced their IT department. When you talk about where we're going with digital platforms, you're also talking about the skill set and having the, the developers and the technologists in the company who are able to understand those things and bridge the technologies to the business to deliver the value. And this is difficult to get from the same offshoring team that you've hired years ago, that banks have often hired years ago to maintain their existing systems more efficiently. So part of it starts with thinking, I've got a big IT staff, they're maintaining my current systems. Is that the right staff to move myself into the digital era? Or do I need a new staff? Do I need to get people on site closer to the business to really interact with them to the point where they get those ideas out into production more easily and quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's always been challenges around uh, cybersecurity and resilience. So uh, let's talk about cloud reinforcing then. Uh, how does mitigation to the cloud reinforce uh, banks around cybersecurity and uh, the resilience going forward? Well, of course, Capital One comes to mind here as well, since they had one of the, the notable breaches over the last few years. 
I note this has not hurt them uh, in the long run because it seems these are, are understood that these things can happen. Um, controls in the cloud are surprisingly better than controls on-prem. And if you think about it, it's because the cloud providers know they have to provide these controls in order to attract business onto the platform. And they are specialists. They are solving these security problems for hundreds, if not thousands of customers, as opposed to each company, each organization solving it for themselves. The, the, the challenge for the organizations moving to the cloud is to understand the different security landscape, the different security posture that's needed. The controls are there, but how to implement them and how to use them. In the case of Capital One, this was something uh, preventable. And I think it's been a clear signal to financial services firms across the, the world to make sure they put the right protections in place when they move to the cloud. The mechanisms are there, but they have to uh, put them in place and it takes a bit of extra effort. I think if they do, they'll find the systems will be even more secure in the cloud than they are on-prem. Um, one reason for that is that systems were never designed to be that secure on-prem as, as they can be on, on the cloud from the beginning. Well, Eric, thank you so much for sharing your insights today. Um, I'm really looking forward to catching up further down the line because this is definitely a space uh, to watch. And for those looking to learn more, I urge them to go to our long read, Reprogramming Banks, uh, Shifting Gears on Digital Disruption, and uh, also catching our webinar on demand, uh, From Culture to Business to Innovation, Leveraging Cloud to Reprogram Banks. But Eric, um, until we catch up further down the line, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Hannah. Thank you. I look forward to the future seeing you again.